All right, friends, and especially our community in Willow, super proud to be able to say that our very truly Misha is into the checkpoint with her dog team and her husband who's been handling with frostbite on his face. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? You're looking oh, no. good. Not too bad. Not too bad. How are the dogs? They look great. Oh, yeah, they are. They're really good. Yeah. Congratulations. So for those of you who don't know the mushroom community that well, who are tuning in from wherever you are or watching on the rebroadcast, Misha is our one of our postal servers in Willow who does an amazing job for us, a great musher and a neighbor and a friend. And it's just great to see her come in here. Hi, Misha. I'm so proud of you. Good job. How was the trail? You know, I was so worried about those sleep bags. Uh-huh. No problem? No. Easy? <laughs> Easy. Last year, they were so bad. They were so bad. Well, your, do your dog's look incredible. <laughs> How many you finished with? Ten. Ten. Congratulations. Thank you. Look like they're ready to Yeah, yeah, go, go snack them. She's got her snack bag. <laughs> Congratulations, Misha. Welcome back. Yeah, that's awesome. She's special in our community back home. She's our postal lady, right? For Willow. Sorry? Yeah. yeah. She makes our life enormously better every day. Beautiful. Look at that leader. She's about ready to take some of hand off. We're getting snack time. Here we are, right here at the finish, folks. It's Monday. The sun rose here at about zero degrees. It's five degrees right now. It's a huge warm up. That is 57 degrees warmer than a couple of days ago. So I know I'm not wearing many layers. My hands feel just fine and we're all sweating at five degrees and zero. That's now warm. That's how. Yeah, let's get Gerhard in there. That was me. Okay, folks, just a cool moment. I know I couldn't get everybody. We were dropping dogs this morning when Tekla came in, did stuff like that, but um, had a chance to get here for Misha, our neighbor and friend in Willow. So everybody back home, here they are at the finish line. Good looking dog team, nice steady pace. This is what these races are often all about for a lot of folks is making a really good effort to keep a good continuous pace and yet go at the speed that's most comfortable for your dog team and get there with happy dogs. And that's what Misha's done. And that was her plan all along. There she is. Ah. Just a humble, beautiful woman. And there's her husband, great team. He uh, got frostbite in his face last weekend, grooming in Willow at minus 40, so Misha could train. It's a beautiful love story. He wasn't able to easily go out the first few days because you can't have frostbite get re-burned right away or else you go into skin death, necrosis, and scarring. Hi, babies. Good job, you guys. You're making us all proud. The Willow community is so proud of you guys. Yes, I know you're a good lead dog and I'm proud of you. Yeah, it's warm today, isn't it? It's so warm today. It's just hot, darn right hot. How about that temperature now, right? <laughs> it's five degrees. Yeah. It's five? It's five, it was zero this morning. It's warm. Oh, is that why you're sweating? <laughs> <laughs> How is it to be a handler? Miserable as always, but fun? Yep. No, I, I, I know now that I've been through it. I know what that means now. There's a moment in time somewhere at Sourdough where you have to just surrender, right? That you're going to be up for days, and, and that's how it is. And congratulations again. You've been putting in the, in the trails for your wife, right? I mean, you've been working your tail off. No, I'm mostly doing the trails and... Training the puppies, and uh, this year we have some. Yeah. 
Great. How many puppies do you have this year? Oh, we have only two, and uh, then our old leaders, you know, they're going together, having fun runs. Right on. And what are the lead dog names? This is Pico. Pico. And that is Basta. 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 All right. And welcome to our online audience. You're right here at the Copper Basin on Monday now. Tecla finished at about 4.30 a.m. Congratulations to her and her kennel. And here's Misha, our neighbor and friend, who's now in. It's right around 11 a.m. or so. It's warm, right? It's warm, Misha, isn't it? It's like five degrees now. <laughs> but you look like you're ready for the cold. <laughs> Misha makes most of all her clothing. You can see her coat there. They make their own dog coats. Yeah, guys, you're getting a snack. Are you getting a really good snack? Is that the best? Uh, when you get to have a snack or two. Really trying to give you the, as if you were right here. And obviously you are, you are sitting two feet from these lead dogs, folks. It's a really cool view. Great organization here in Glen Allen that puts on this race. The vets are all here, locals come out to the finish, people are also watching online, and of course, we're grateful for everybody's participation in this uh, great event. It's really, really extraordinarily interesting how at first the cold temperatures seem so brutal, and then the whole community here has gone through this. And now today it's like a warm, beautiful day at zero. <laughs> and the dogs look, look at them, they just look great. Yeah. Should we go see some others? Let's go see some other dogs. How are you guys doing down here? Oh, you're getting frisky already, aren't you? You're getting frisky already. Because he knows that mommy's getting ready to get out of here. What a moment is in there, folks. Just take it all in. Misha has finished the Copper Basin 300. The community of Willow is super proud. And this race is slowly coming to an end here. Keep an eye on the Siberian team and here comes Misha. That's a good looking team right there. Good job, Misha. There she goes. So we'll be able to give you some longer footage here, folks. And Susan Picotti from my online audience, it's great coverage. Oh, you're very kind. Very, very kind. Yeah, Marianne, we have Misha in. So all of our neighbors who are watching back home, this is what classy, persistent, wonderful dog mushing is about. It's somebody making their gear at home, taking the time with their dogs on the budget they have. Misha had no intention to be in the top anything. She just wanted to go along the trail and have a nice run and get here. And I'm super proud of her. Here we go. So the ritual continues. Tug lines get pulled. Look at the dogs. They know that this is their little world here. They know this is home. Here come the bowls. And it's warm, folks, even though it's, you know, it's five degrees right now for us, that's warm. And you'll see the dog's muscles quiver and such like that, but it's not because it's cold right now. It's, you know, there's a, there's a whole thing that happens here in the metabolism. It is a warm day at five degrees. Here's their little kennel in case you want to follow along. WW Kennel. And there's Mish right there. So it's just, let's just cross frame. There she is, real life. Yeah. Hi, babies. Are you guys happy to be home? I'll bet that trail was pretty nice, though. Kind of a good rhythm. Yeah. There's Gerhard getting ready. All right, we have a Misha fan out there, Molly McCarty from our online audience. Just left a nice comment that Misha and her husband will read later. Yay, Misha, you're the toughest girl I know. Good job. 
Dogs look great. And they do. They really do. Do you look great? Do you think that Molly's right? Is Molly seeing what I'm seeing? A frisky, happy dog who's ready just to crush some calories and get a nap. Are you guys also good and alert and oriented and ready to crush some food and get a nap? Yeah, there's a good looking dog team here. That's a good looking dog team right here. So we're just at the finish here with Misha's team, folks. We're just, you're behind the scenes. Day in the life of a musher. You finished the big race you've prepared for for months. You spent a lot of money on the drop bags and all the food and the snacks, and here you are at the end. Dogs need to get fed. You're just behind the scenes getting a look as if you were here in Glen Allen, Alaska, except for you wouldn't quite have this access. So we're trying to always give you the best. So you can see transparency. That's our mission here at the Alaska Dog Center. And thanks to Carrie and Rosie back home for letting me come out and spend the weekend here with the Copper Basin family and help handle for Team Squid. Cody, I hope you're enjoying the rest you got last night. We got about seven hours at Team Squid. We finally slept. We fed our dogs. Uh, everybody's a little bit delirious, of course. The dogs are looking great. And here, Misha and Gerard are going to do their thing. Always buckets, buckets with ladles. That's how we feed dogs on this scale. So if you haven't been to a, I'll get in there and show you here. See, there's always a ladle, there's always a scooper. There's always really high protein, beautiful meat, red blood cells, fat, kibble, all the good stuff. Look at that, yeah. And you'd be surprised. Dogs aren't always wool, uh, wool you know, like really chomping it down. They're not always voracious eaters. Sometimes towards the end of a run, they'll be like, yeah, I'm good. And sometimes they'll crush it, like right here. You're crushing it. Let's see you crush that. Yeah, you crush that. And of course, this kind of eating is what you want to see just because it gives you a little more assurance that they're getting nutrients and the liquids back. But it doesn't mean that these guys are not healthy and not having a good time. They're just... You know, looking around, maybe they'll get into it here, doing a little dog dance around their food. But these two aren't messing around. All right, they're crushing. You guys are crushing. The lead dogs, head down, fueling the tank. Yeah, you get into that. And remember, there's all kinds of dog events, folks. This is a long distance one. This is where the dogs go across landscapes at multi-day events. So they're getting so much food during the day that they're always more than enough food for sled dogs. The mushers always fly and bring and carry more food because you want to be hopeful that they're going to eat extra. But you know, they're athletes. And just like you, when you're doing athletic stuff, the body goes through changes and you don't always need it. Okay, there's Gerhard. He's gonna start to change things up a little bit. Yeah, you get that. Maybe they need to be invited to eat too. Sometimes dogs get weird about food. There you go, get it. And there's always extra, there's always more in the bucket. Mushers have very strong triceps, lats, shoulder type, because they're carrying buckets around all the time. Oh, you gonna get, finish that little snack there? You getting into it? You gonna finish your friend's snack? How'd you guys do? Oh, it could do a little better. So there you go. Here's the sled, folks. Let's take a close up of that. First thing the bib says is thank you volunteers for Copper Basin. Big shout out to the whole race org. This is what a Copper Basin sled looks like. This is a distance sled. Clearly it's designed, this one in particular, to be a one bag carry. So it's got the main blue bag there and inside that bag is everything. Some of these sleds have another attachment and longer rails so that the longer attachment would start here and go this way and have another little spot to put one of those buckets. 
potentially sit on. That's a longer, bigger sled, more to navigate, more parts, more pieces. Mushers always have their extra necklines. All these snaps, sometimes these snaps free. Sorry, I burned my hand there on coffee a couple uh, weeks ago in Willow. Um, so that's what that is. And then these snaps are critical, but they can freeze really badly. And so you have to smash them and you're trying to get the, them off. So mushers get good at that. That's a skill there in the book you got to have. Snow hooks, big old tough things. You got to have two of them. Of course, the rough keeps all that fine minus 50 off your face keep your skin from burning and then inside you have to have your sleeping bag there's a prairie built right on out of North Dakota I think we have a couple of those on order congratulations prairie built you made it to the finish line you can see that type of engineering on there to make sure you have enough flex and rigidity so there's your rigidity there's your flex both of them together working so the sled can move back and forth and be able to rock on itself. It's pretty cool. That's how you corner. And then in there is also your veterinary book, axe, booties. Dogs have to have coats. Same as the Iditarod setup. So there you are. That's a typical setup, a nice three-quarter ton truck, a trailer. The trailer has all the dog condos in there, so they keep themselves warm. You need to actually vent it. And then the sled goes in the trailer because usually the trailers only have dog houses on one side or they're big enough to have on both and fit the sled. So everything goes in there, self-contained. And then they'll do what I'll do today is they'll head back to Willow, get back home to Paradise, and get on the trails. Bonnie Foster's giving us some intel here. Thanks so much, Bonnie. And again, our, our online audience here is always so knowledgeable. I'm so honored to have all the veterans of the sled dog world here to help us out. But yeah, that Prairie Built, great company. I know they have a lot of fans out there and then that's that look again. So everybody's got a little different setup. We're getting booties off now. Yeah, we're getting booties off, we're getting unclipped. All right, folks, thanks so much for all the love. We're gonna start, uh, I'm gonna go back and join Paige and Dylan and Kate, my family here, and eat a little food. We'll take care of the dogs one more time. And then we gotta pack up about one o'clock and hit the road and get back to life and uh, of course, we'll miss you. We'll miss this, but we'll get back together again here at the Willow 300. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up real soon. So, um, And Stan Shaw from the audience just asked, are you going to mush a team one day and raise kale? Yeah, you bet. And, and just uh, my background is I've been to four world championships racing for Team USA and more of the small dog stuff, one and two dog. So I've raced in Canada and Alaska. Um, in Alaska, I did the Puka, Ski Jour combined, all these Nordic events with really fast dogs. That was 2013. So you can find that story in Dog Power, the movie. So it's on Vimeo right now. It was on Amazon, but go to Vimeo, search for Dog Power, get it, watch it, and uh, you'll see my travels all around the world to Germany and Norway, Sweden, Italy, Poland, racing at different events and what have you. But yes, long answer to say one day I'll I'll run a bigger team for sure. Alaska Dog Center's privileged to have Carrie Pavlet as the business manager and employee owner, and she has 30 dogs with her kennel, Bad Manners Kennel. And so it's an honor to be able to work with Carrie's dogs, and we're starting to get our own kennel established at the Dog Center. We've been working on getting our education and gift shop and cafe open, and then we'll get more dogs down the road. So you'll see me out here, but it's also fun to cover it. <laughs> you have to have a lot of, uh, of dedication, and I'm a firefighter, so I have a lot of duties. And so until I can lessen those duties in the summer, I, I can't justify it. But anyway, good question. Thank you for that. And yeah, who doesn't want to go out with you guys? Who doesn't want to go out with you and go check it out? Look at those beautiful eyes. 
And look at that beautiful place. What's going on in there? Keeping an eye on everybody? Are you keeping an eye? Are you keeping an eye out? Yeah, they're beautiful. Oh, you're gonna have a little awkward sit? Okay, right next to your food? Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's good. Meanwhile, it's like, let me find the scraps over here. Oh, there's one more. Let's get it. Just like these guys, let's get it. Really, really sweet. All right, so right now we're in Glen Allen, Alaska, folks. This is the end of the Copper Basin 300. That's the sign right there, Copper Basin 300, Glen Allen, Alaska. That is northeast of Anchorage. And it's the base camp town for Wrangell St. Elias National Park. And there's Whitney, our photographer. So big shout out to Whitney. Go online, look at the Copper Basin 300 page. I, I tag it every time I put up a post. Go see Whitney's photos, order them, support her. She has just crushed it. Beautiful, beautiful photos. There's the camera hanging off. There's Whit right there. She's waving now. So go ahead and give Whit a big comment, shout out. Her photos capture so many great emotions. Yeah, you want to finish that one? Well, why not? You want to go ahead and rub your neck? I think that's a good idea. Get your whole face too. Yeah, does that feel good? Does that feel good? <laughs> yeah, go, 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 get some more. Oh, you're also keeping an eye out. You hear that truck there, right? All right, there's Misha. So now we get some medicines. They'll get some nutrients and pills. All righty. There's another kennel or somebody supporting. Oh, get, get it. And get it. Well, back to you getting it. <laughs> right back to you just getting it. Keep an eye on all that stuff behind me, right? Yeah. Okay, folks. Heading home. Love you guys. Thanks for everything.